um, just, uh... Now available, paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, the main event. It's carnage inside of a steel cage when the goddess next door steps in the squared circle with the beast from the box of this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, the main event, paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. About a month ago, I saw the trailer for DC Comics' new graphic novel, Gotham High, by Melissa de la Cruz. And after I saw that trailer, I just cringed because everything that Batman was about wasn't in that trailer or in that premise for the graphic novel. And what was even more troubling than the trailer, which detailed a love triangle between Selina Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, an Asian Bruce Wayne, and Jack Napier, a.k.a. the Joker, was the fact that this author wanted to create a premise called where Batman met Gossip Girl. And if anybody knows Batman, that whole concept is diametrically opposed to everything that it would be in a Gossip Girl or a 90210 or whatever YA type story like Twilight is all about. And while this trailer went on, I wanted to try to remain objective and I couldn't, and I tried to stay objective until I saw the article where your Melissa de la Cruz stated she knew nothing about the Batman character, she knew nothing about Batman's history, and she knew nothing about Batman's lore. And those statements showed me that your Melissa de la Cruz clearly was not qualified to write anything regarding the Batman character, and that DC's editorial had made a grave mistake allowing this woman to write anything featuring their characters or their intellectual property. And when I look at the graphic novel, now that I've gotten a chance to take a look at a copy online, it proves my point regarding how grossly unqualified your Melissa de la Cruz is and how incompetent your DC editorial was to let such a title come out of its imprint because everything in this graphic novel is everything comic fans have been complaining about as regarding these social justice narratives and these whole woke narratives which are all about preaching diversity passively while aggressively promoting racist stereotypes and going out of their way to give us really poorly crafted storytelling because your Gotham High is one of the worst comics I have seen in my life. This comic has no story and it is basically nothing more than glorified fan fiction where your Melissa de la Cruz basically takes her fantasy ideas regarding Batman and transposes them onto those characters. She basically uses these characters as avatars for her political ideas and uses them to promote her social justice narratives in between the pages of this story, which is supposed to be about your Gotham City and supposed to be about Batman, but I don't see anything here about Batman at all as related to his history, his characters, or his lore. She's just basically using the characters' names in a desperate effort to try to sell this incredibly weak story because if these characters had other names, no one would care about this graphic novel. Now, the novel opens up using one of the classic woke SJW tropes, going to attack white males. And on the splash page for the first page of the graphic novel, she talks about welcoming to Gotham City's Arkham Preparatory School for Boys. So basically, she's saying that white males who go to preparatory schools are basically insane, and that their prep school is basically an insane asylum. So she's passively saying that, oh, this is a prep school, but aggressively taking a swipe at white males. And 
pushes the wokeness from the splash page to the second page, where we get another passive-aggressive swipe at black men in that second page, where we get this forced diversity Dick Grayson, who is a black male, passively promoting so-called diversity, but aggressively pushing racism because she goes out of her way to emasculate Dick Grayson in just a couple of pages by having him be the victim of these bullies and not being strong enough to defend himself or be able to protect himself. So between the lines, you have your Melissa De La Cruz promoting so-called diversity, but then passive-aggressively taking a swipe at the black man by emasculating him and making him appear to be the weakest man in the room. And because your Dick Grayson is being beaten up by these white males in this woke narrative, what's, the guy who swoops in is the Asian Bruce Wayne. And again, this is another passive-aggressive swipe at your Asian male. Passively, yes, she's included Bruce Wayne to be the hero of the graphic novel, but aggressively she pushes the stereotype that Asians are good at martial arts. So we get another passive-aggressive swipe, again, promoting so-called diversity and inclusion, but what she doesn't see is she's just promoting more of the same stereotypes. And this is what the woke crowd don't understand, is that your attempts at so-called diversity, all they do is reinforce many of the arguments regarding racism. Now, after your Bruce Wayne defends the black Dick Grayson, he is then punished by the white male Commissioner Gordon, or the, um, what is it, uh, dean of the whole school, and he is sent, he is expelled from the school. And as a result of being expelled from the school, your Asian Bruce Wayne has to wind up leaving the school. But we get an interlude to Jack Napier, another white male, and again, he's shown to be a bad guy doing bad stuff. So he's a, he's a street guy, and they're showing that he, oh, white males, again, don't know how to really do anything, but we get Bruce Wayne, the Asian Bruce Wayne, we get it, and then after that, we get this really, really dark and twisted, you know, revision of Batman's origin that really didn't set well with me, because when they did this revision, Melissa De La Cruz did this revision to Batman's origin, she basically threw up a middle finger at Bob Kane and Bill Finger, the original creators of Batman. So we get this sequence where Bruce goes home. He's talking about his Asian mother, and they're talking about going to the theater to go see Madame Butterfly. And this right here is a complete middle finger up at Bob Kane and Bill Finger because the Batman character origins, one of the inspirations for him is Zorro. And every Batman fan knows that Zorro plays a major role in Batman's creation because this character of Zorro is one of the things that inspires Batman to wear his mask. Tornado the horse inspires the Batmobile. Your Zorro had a cave which inspired the Batcave. And them changing this to Madame Butterfly completely changes the character and makes him a completely different character because Batman is directly connected to Zorro and to say, oh, he's going to go to the theater to see Madame Butterfly because Melissa De La Cruz is half Asian, practically turns the character away from what was rooted into his source material. So she comes in here talking about Oh, they went to go see Madam Butterfly in an attempt to promote woke diversity. But what she does is she practically compromises everything that she was trying to do because it shows us all she knows absolutely nothing about the source material. And as she tries to deviate from the original Bruce Wayne story, we don't get a crime alley. We get a home invasion. And this home invasion angle, again, goes against everything that the Batman character was all about. Because the great tragedy of Bat Bruce Wayne being in that alley, that's another major part of the Batman lore. And to practically call yourself rewriting him slaps Bob Kane and Bill Finger in the face and practically shows absolutely no respect for the original source material. Because... 
Crime Alley is iconic to Batman's story. Crime Alley is essential to Batman's story. And to say you're going to take these essential elements away from the character shows that you really are not the person who is qualified to write this. You really should not be allowed to write this. And any editor who would allow you to do this, this person should be terminated because to put the names of these characters and this intellectual property and connect them with this type of story shows someone who doesn't understand the damage they're doing to the character and doing to the brand. And these woke types, they're thinking, oh, this is a big step towards diversity, but what you've done is create something that is not even anywhere near the original source material at all. And again, you're taking everything that Bob Kane and Bill Finger created and you're basically throwing it in the garbage because you want to push your glorified fan fiction version. And your glorified fan fiction version is it, it's nowhere near as compelling as the original story that Bob Kane and Bill Finger wrote and that Frank Miller and many others went out here and adapted and continued to show anything. Because they just show us random robbers and did not show us how, why Joe Chill is so important. So they don't even make it about Joe Chill. And Joe Chill is essential to Bruce's story. Now, as the story goes on, we get everything as related to this woke narrative because here comes your alphabet Alfred, and he's supposed to be Bruce's caretaker. And again, another attempt to promote so-called diversity and identity politics but it completely mangles everything as related to the story because, as I see it, if you want to create some type of adaptation based on the original, on somebody else's characters, you need to respect their work and you need to respect everything that they put in it. And giving us these token diversity characters for so-called diversity points, this doesn't really give us a compelling story. All it does is give us a story where people are just looking to check off boxes to see diversity points. And now we've gotten those diversity points, but we've also got the same diversity racism where we've gotten the evil white male, Jack Napier, the evil white males in Arkham, the Asian hero that basically fits your Melissa De La Cruz's fantasy, half Asian hero, handsome hunk. We get your alphabet Alfred, who basically is there passively to promote diversity, but aggressively there just to promote more stereotypes. And then we get into your Selena Kyle, who finally pops up around the 20th page. And she is Selena Garcia Kyles. And that's so woke because she's not just a white girl. She's half Hispanic. And again, this character is basically a Mary Sue and basically an avatar for your Melissa De La Cruz so that she can have her diversity fantasy and use this character's name to avoid putting her own name in the book so that people will not see her as herself. And when I look at this, it's just, again, it's like glorified fan fiction, and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything as related to Batman at all. There's not really much Batman in this Gotham High story. It's a lot more like a Gossip Girl or a 90210 and the whole thing is about she knew Bruce Wayne and way back and he's come back and they're going to try to get back together. And as the comic goes on, again, we see more and more of them trying to get to know each other. And then we get Harvey Dent, who's supposed to be the biracial guy. And then there's this so-called mystery regarding some sort of kidnappings. But the whole plot of this graphic novel is absolute trash because... There's not real much thought put into creating characters. There's not really much thought as to creating a story. It is all about promoting so-called diversity and inclusion by using a premise that really has nothing to do with diversity or inclusion. Now, if these writers had any sort of confidence in their story, they wouldn't be out here trying to project their ideas onto these characters of Batman 
and Batman's lore. No, what they would be doing is having the confidence to take their original characters and their original ideas and trying to sell their original characters and their ideas because if your Melissa De La Cruz had confidence, she would go to DC Comics and say, hey, let's do a graphic novel about a half Asian guy and a romance where he's in a romance with a half Hispanic Asian woman and there's a love triangle between them and a white dude and that would be their story. Unfortunately, because these, she knows her story is so formula by the numbers and would not stand out at all in a comic shop or a Barnes and Noble as a prose novel. She goes out here and DC Comics goes out here and they transpose Batman character names onto the characters and that just shows how little confidence they have in their premise, how little confidence they have in their story, and how little confidence they have in themselves. Because the big problem with many of these woke writers is they want to promote your so-called diversity and inclusion, but they don't want to include anything as related to substance. And what a lot of these woke writers want to do is they want to get attention from the controversy as related to them changing the races and ethnicities of the characters, but they don't want to put in the work into the substance of the story by giving us rich multi-dimensional characters, rich character storylines, or give us anything that makes us care. Because when I read through the entire Gotham High graphic novel, it was something that I saw in, a, again, a dozen other YA books as related to these love triangles. And I can go back as far as the early 1990s with your Brenda, your Brenda Walsh, your Dylan McKay, and uh, Valerie from 90210. I mean, it was no different than anything I have seen in a dozen other teen-type dramas like Dawson, Leary, Pacey, and and what was Joey Potter. I mean, these there's nothing here that is special or distinct. I mean, there's no nothing here different than, again, your Dylan McKay, your Valerie, and your, I forget what Jenny Garth's character, or Brenda Walsh, or, um, it, it, there's, a, there's a dozen of them. I mean, there was, um, or your, um, there, there's, there's a bunch of them, Dawson, Joey, and Pacey, or the, everything here was so dime a dozen that it, it, there's nothing here special, except for the, the DC character names being transposed on these characters. Again, if you change these characters' names and just name them any other character, nobody would care about this Gotham High, and nobody would even be thinking about it but except for the controversy that was generated when this trailer came on and they started showing us this so-called half-Asian Bruce Wayne and this Hispanic Asian Selena Kyle and the love triangle between them, if this story did not feature anything as related to those names, no one would care about this book and this book would be seen as something irrelevant to everyone. And then the whole thing with these woke narratives is, is that a lot of these writers, they're very insecure they lack the confidence to go out here and write a good story. So they look to use identity politics as a gimmick to try to sell a weak story to an audience. And they try to use diversity as a selling point in order to sell that weak story. And again, a smart publisher, when they look at this story, they're going to look at it for the weak story it is. Unfortunately, DC's editorial was hoping to get some eyeballs on this book generated on the controversy. Unfortunately, that's not going to get them sales in the long term. Now, any smart publisher, they would have rejected this premise with a nice form letter because they would say, you don't know anything about the characters, you don't know anything about the source material, and we're going to protect our intellectual property because we don't want to see our intellectual property butchered. We don't want to see our intellectual property devalued. And if you cannot go out here and make an effort to look at our intellectual property and give it the respect it deserves, 
then you can't write our material. But unfortunately, again, DC Comics was run by a very incompetent editor at the time, and they let this really bad story go through. And this story, again, is just not anything related to the Batman lore. It's not related to anything as related to Batman. It's just another run-of-the-mill romance-type YA novel. And what's really sad is that this glorified fan fiction got a green light when there are so many great premises out there, so many great stories out there, and those stories should have been published in place of this complete piece of garbage that should have never gotten any sort of green light. And I, as I see it, again, this is a stain on the author's reputation and it's a stain on DC's reputation because it shows that their standards are at an all-time low because they would rather publish this to get controversy going on social media rather than get create the next great classic and that's another painful thing about the whole about these woke types is they're looking to generate controversy and promote so-called diversity but what's really sad is really talented black writers like myself they don't want to let us in the door to create new characters and promote actual diversity because if you had a seasoned writer like myself who was going to create a new character there would be a new story and the whole thing is readers would go and identify with that character the same way many readers and viewers identified with Virgil Hawkins aka Static and his show Static Shock when it was on the air and what it really shows again with these woke types again they're passively all about diversity, but they're aggressively all about oppressing any sort of actual diversity by showing us different aspects of black culture or any other culture out there and any other aspects of black life or any other type of life out there. They would rather promote their identity politics talking about inclusion rather than actively going out to include talented black creators and creators of color out here who want to create their own characters, tell their own stories, and give us a richer and again broader and diverse picture of life. We can't get that because the woke types are all about promoting these types of false narratives like the ones promoted in Gotham High where they take this character these Batman characters and project other concepts and ideas on them and talk about it's all about diversity but I can see the white supremacy going on between the lines and the same old racism going on between the lines of these types of stories and I just see again with this so-called woke narrative in this book it just shows us how disingenuous dishonest and dysfunctional our comic book industry is because instead of us going out here and promoting actual diversity by bringing in new black creators and creators of color they would rather promote your identity politics where they passively promote talk about diversity but then give us the same old stereotypes in a brand new bag in very poorly crafted stories that really aren't going to resonate with any readers because most of the readers aren't going to care because they want to see what they call the real Batman, who is a white male. They're going to want to see the real Catwoman, who is a white woman, the real Joker, who's a white man. And they're going to look at these other characters as knockoffs. Because when I look at this overall Gotham High, it's, it's a terrible book, not only because it's glorified fan fiction, but in some ways it comes across as some really bad import knockoff story that... It looks, it has the names of the characters, but has none of the heart, the soul, or the roots of the source material. And just like many of those really bad import toys that I would see in the bodega calling themselves Space Rangers or S-O-O-P-E-R, Man, Superman, these, they, they look, they, they, have the, they have the name of the characters, but they are not the characters. And most kids who would look at this kind of book would look at this book the same way they would look at those cheap knockoff toys and say, that's not a real Power Ranger, that's not the real Iron Man, that's not the real Captain America, and they're going to leave it on the shelf because they know if they pick up this book, they're going to get laughed at, 
And what's really sad is that many of the people who greenlit this book don't see how they're making themselves into laughingstocks by approving trash like this for production. And what's really even the saddest part is, here we have DC Comics going out of its way to make a knockoff of its own product and then not understanding why no one takes, this is one of the reasons why no one takes many in the comic book industry seriously these days because these woke characters, they don't come across like the real thing. They come across as pale, poorly made imitations and this Gotham High is one of the poorest imitations of Batman I have ever seen in my life. If you'd like to pick up some of my original SJS Direct fantasy fiction, like the Isis series, the e Steam series, the John Haynes series, or the Spinsterella trilogy showing you diverse a diversity of images, African-American culture and African-American life and fantasy. You may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. There you'll find all my books in paperback and Kindle formats. And if you want to see me make more video reviews like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs with the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get the regular and variant editions of John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com.